Hey, Cameron here. Today we are looking at Steam Decks, the original version and also the OLED uh, limited edition as well. Now, I have done some benchmarks on these devices and I have not seen, I have not seen anyone cover benchmarks on what happens when you undervolt the OLED version because we all know that they seem to have done some interesting things with the TDP They've tried to make it match the original Steam Deck, uh, but it has, it's, a, it's definitely some better silicon in here, more power efficient in general. And I think that there's some gains to be had. I've noticed performance improvements and I'll, I'll basically show them to you, the, the benchmarks that, I, that I've run. And let's go ahead and look at that first thing. Okay, so I ran Cyberpunk on the Steam Deck and I did this on the original stock clock Steam Deck and got an average of 45.4 using the Steam Deck high setting. And then I proceeded to undervolt uh, said original Steam Deck and that got us to 46.97. And um, the next thing I did was I actually overclocked the RAM on the original Steam Deck and brought that up to 6400 megatransfers per second which put it on par with the, well, spec-wise put it on par with the OLED Steam Deck. And that bumped our uh, performance further to 47.68. And that was a 5% improvement over the original stock clock Steam Deck. And then the final thing I did was um, both overclock the RAM to 6400 mega transfers per second and then I left the GPU and CPU undervolted, but I had to raise the SOC voltage to stock levels in order to maintain the 6400 mega transfers per second. But this was a combination of the best of all worlds that I could get in terms of performance um, on the original Steam Deck. And that basically got me to 48.3 average frames per second. And that, in general, was a 6.39% gain over stock. Uh, so that was interesting uh, to be able to go through that. Now, uh, now we have the OLED Steam Deck. And what, right off the bat, stock versus stock. Uh, what did we get? Well, um, the original got 45.4. And the OLED got 46.36 stock. And this is a 2.11% gain, and that's in line with what we're seeing with a lot of the reviews I was looking at. Uh, I've been watching on YouTube. I'm sure all of you have as well. <clears throat> but also, I wanted to see, you know, can we push this thing further? What happens if we undervolt the Steam Deck OLED? And when I did that, I got uh, 49.07 per, uh, frames per second. And that is uh, essentially an 8% jump over the original Steam Deck at stock clocks. So that was, you know, far and away the best result that I got here, which is what you'd expect. Um, so, you know, if you're, the thing is, is in order to, you know, overclock the original stock Steam Deck to get 6,400 mega transfers per second, um, that could ended up being a little bit difficult um, to do. There was a lot of, you know, playing with the BIOS and using smoke lists and a couple of things that you had to do to get that done, uh, which maybe dissuaded quite a few people um, from actually doing that. With the OLED, you don't have to do anything. You have all the relevant controls uh, to get it as high as you want, and it's out of the box, has 6,400 mega transfers per second, and in general, just is more efficient um, but yeah, that, that is a nice little bump. A, from the original, you're getting a 2% bump like we've seen, but also if you're willing to undervolt uh, your Steam Deck OLED, you can get quite a bit better than you could get on the original stock Steam Deck, up to 8% faster, uh, stock for stock. If you look at it just in terms of if you had already tweaked your Steam Deck to the max, overclocked the RAM, the memory, that was only 6.39% better than the original stock clocks where we're getting 8.08% better on the OLED uh, with a with a healthy undervolt. 8% is, is decent. I mean, if you get an Intel CPU upgrade generation per generation at 8%, you're doing pretty well for yourself. So, 
and that's about you know maybe a I'd have to do the math on that, but that's a that's a five six percent gain off of stock OLED as well if you take the trouble to undervolt it. Okay, let me give you a quick tutorial on how to undervolt your Steam Deck. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, the Steam Deck is tied to you know maybe a fifteen watt TDP max. So if you um, basically let it do more work inside the 15 watt TDP, which is, a, is you're, when you're talking TDP, you're talking about power. And uh, the less power you use, um, because you're giving it less voltage, if you can do less voltage while maintaining the same clock speed or higher clock speed, you're gonna get more performance inside that power envelope. Uh, so undervolting is a way to let it try to apply more clocks while staying under a 15 watt uh, target. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is shut down your Steam Deck. So let's shut it down. Once your Steam Deck is off, you're gonna want to hold down the volume up button, volume plus, and then Press the power button once for about a second and then let go while continuing to hold the volume up. Now this gets you into a little menu that looks like this. The next step that you're going to take, let me zoom you in a little bit to get a better view of what's going on here, is you want to go to the setup utility. So we're going to hit A on that. And then from there you're going to want to go to advanced and then hit right and then down, down, down. And you can see uh, down under power control, you have CPU voltage offset, GPU voltage offset, and SOC voltage offset. Now for me, I was fairly lucky. I was able to get 40, 40, and negative 30. Sorry, negative 40, negative 40, and negative 30. Uh, on my deck, that will not be necessarily the same on your deck. So start with, you know, Start slow and work your way up if you're not seeing stability issues. You know, reduce that negative 40 is the lowest you can go. So if you hit negative 40, congratulations. Um, but uh, it's worth taking it slow, making sure that you don't uh, brick your deck, which there's, it, I would say that's a very low possibility, but to, you know, just be careful, you know, go slow. Uh, but uh, if you can get uh, down to negative four, you're going to get uh, a perceptible increase in performance. And I'm seeing um, just impression wise on the OLED Steam Deck versus the stock. Obviously, uh, right off the bat, the screen is just amazing. I even have the... Um, the deck hd upgrade installed on my old steam deck and while that did make a big difference in clarity uh, i still much prefer the oled screen even though it's a little bit lesser resolution it just looks so great things are so legible um even though the other one has high resolution i really like this oled screen it's it's perfect and i it can i find myself being able to enjoy certain titles way more than I could otherwise. Um, so that that is kind of my thoughts and a little taste of what you can get if you want to uh, undervolt your Steam Deck OLED uh, because you can get quite a, quite a bit of a performance uplift on that. So anyway, it's just a quick video uh, with my thoughts on that. I do have, I do have both uh, the glossy 512 OLED, which you can, maybe I can get a little shot of that. So I think this is a good example of, of the difference between the 512 and the etched glass. Now, which to you, like, obviously this is worst case scenario. We're in a bright light. Um, which of these to you is more distracting. Okay, let's try that again. So which of these to you is more distracting? Um, you can see that while this 
the the uh, glossy screen does reflect more and more clearly this diffuser you know it spreads that light all over your screen which is to me that's not necessarily ideal again this is a very bright light um but but and i get it like this is this is not every scenario you're going to use it in but anyways um i'm still unsure if i <laughs> if I want to keep the uh, 512 black or the special edition um, version, I would put a two terabyte in these either way. So the performance is the same. Um, the only difference is uh, the looks and the, um, the orange accents and the etched glass screen versus the glossy screen. Um, but again, I, I, would, I would have you question you know which which actually is more distracting in terms of like the light being spread out like that I don't know I need to play with it some more to make my final decision but anyways that's just that's just a thought hope you enjoy uh, see you on some more videos in the future